Good to see you, everyone. My name is Robbie Howell, and we are back from our prolonged leave of absence. As you can see, I have a new setup behind me. I've moved to another room in the house, and that took a little bit of getting used to, not to mention my infant son is on a new schedule that I have been adapting to. But we are now back, and hopefully we have a little more time to talk about various hobbies and funky things, including, of course, Age of Empires. So let's jump in. Today I have something a little bit different for you today. We're not bringing you a civilization. Instead, we are going to be bringing you a new unit. Yes, a proposed new addition to the standard Age of Empires unit oeuvre that could be available to the majority of civilizations. Probably the single most broad-ranging addition to the game since the Siege Tower. That being the Footman. This would be a new barracks unit, and heavy infantrymen meant to fill a niche that neither the swordsman line nor the spear line currently fill, though it bears similarities to both of them. As always, check out the description for a link to a comprehensive unit document. It'll give a whole lot more detail than I'll give here. This is for an overview of the project. But with all that being said, let's jump right into it. Disclaimers, disclaimers, disclaimers. You should probably know them by now. I am a hobbyist. I'm not a historian. I have not tested any of this. I'm going in completely blind. Namely, I am not looking up other people's builds for similar things that are currently on the internet as is. And of course, in my own philosophy of game design, I favor complexity, I favor variety, I try to push the game's boundaries, and I really try to be as true to the actual history as possible in how I implement my mechanics. Well, all that being said, let's get on to the footman. So, what is the footman based upon? Well, largely speaking, it is based upon the spear and shield heavy infantrymen that made up the backbone of most historical armies for a very large period of history. You'll see this combo featured as far back as ancient Sumeria, with some of the very first known historical art depicting soldiers with a spear and shield. And though while it is best known as being a mainstay of ancient history, such as the Greek Oplites and the Macedonian Phalangites and a whole lot of others that I don't know the specific names for, it was still very prominent during the AoE2 relevant time frame, from the fall of Rome all the way up to 1600 AD. During that gigantic period, the Spear and Shield was a huge fixture of a great many armies. I would say that up until probably 1100 AD, it was the most common infantryman type you would find if you were to scan all of the battlefields of the ancient world that are currently represented in Age of Empires. Which brings me to the question, why the hell is the Ghulam the first spear and shield soldier that we have represented in the game? In fact, I was first inspired to make this unit and this video when I saw some of the leaked screenshots for the India DLC, which is great, by the way. I love the India DLC. The Ghulam is a very cool unit. But when I saw it, I saw these spear and shield wielding guys, I was like, oh my goodness, they're going to finally add a spear and shield soldier into the game. But no, of course, it's a unique unit. Blech. So we're trying to remedy that here and now. The other thing that the footman is based on are historical bodyguards. Typically speaking, a chieftain or king or war leader would have a retinue of hand-picked favorites. And these sorts of soldiers were prominent everywhere. I think if you looked into it, you would find them in just about every single culture to ever exist. And it just makes sense. You want your leader to be surrounded by their most loyal, their most solid, and their most combat-capable and hardy soldiers. Especially those who you give a little bit of treasure to and you bind through whatever warrior code or social rituals happen to be popular in your culture. These soldiers, since they were so valuable and well-trained, would often have the best armor in the army, or at least up there among the best armor. And since they were bodyguards, they would be almost entirely defensive in nature. So where might you have found footmen represented around the world? What specific historical units is this given unit in Age of Empires trying to cover? Well, there's a lot of European precedent for footman-style units. The Romans documented during their conquest of the Barbarian North a German tradition which they titled the Comitatus, though Rome, of course, did also have hand-picked elite bodyguards in the form of the Praetorians. But anyways, the Comitatus would later evolve into a variety of European bodyguard traditions which would persist throughout the Dark Ages and into the Middle Ages. The Slavic Georgina, which is currently represented by by a technology is an obvious pick, as is the Frankish Antristian, which was during the Carolinian Empire, and the Norse Heerd, 
and all of these follow the exact same model of hand-picked elite heavily armored bodyguards. Additionally, our good friend the Huskarl probably originated as a similar elite bodyguard unit, though it is currently iconic enough in-game that I wouldn't want to undo it or break it down for the purposes of introducing the footmen. I think the two can coexist. But it's not just limited to Europe. In Burma, there was an elite bodyguard unit called the Thwei Thol. This translated literally to the Blood Sworn Guard, which is metal as fuck. Their binding ritual did involve some sort of blood oath, though the details on it are not well known, just representing that even though you often see blood oaths depicted in European history and historical fiction, they existed all around the world, or at least they existed in medieval Burma. All the way on the other side of the world in South America, the Incas also had a very proud tradition of elite bodyguards as well as spear and shield infantry tactics, which needless to say also existed in the above societies as well, Burma and Europe and all over the rest of the world. These are just some examples that managed to hybridize the two themes to illustrate what I'm trying to go for with the footmen. So the Incas had their imperial guard, which obviously would have fought with spear and their iconic cloth shields, and in fact the current Incan unique unit, the Kamayuk, was more of an officer in the actual Incan army, or, or maybe a title could be a better word. The, the idea was a Kamayuk was one who is responsible. So the Imperial Guard may have been Kamayuks, because they were responsible for the safety of the Emperor, as well as lesser iterations of these guardsmen who would be responsible for lesser nobles that they were protecting. So as I hope you're seeing, there's precedent for this sort of unit all over the world in entirely disparate cultures. But in addition to this historical niche, I think the unit would have a very clear mechanical niche as well. I would argue that what infantry lacks in Age of Empires is some sort of backbone power unit. Something that is tough and reliable and can brute force its way through enemies rather than dying in droves, like infantry are normally prone to do. On real medieval battlefields, the vast majority of soldiers were infantrymen. They were the backbone of the army, and frankly, they were very hard to kill and rout in the degree that you see them dying in Age of Empires. In AoE, infantry are incredibly weak units in general. The only thing they really do well is destroying buildings, and I don't think that is entirely reflective of how they really operated on the medieval battlefield. Cavalry would never dare charge an infantry block, and archers could shoot into infantry for days without scoring that many kills. You see this recorded, for example, in the Crusades, where a good shield wall of Crusaders would absorb arrow fire for well over 24 hours and still hold firm. I think we can agree that that's not really well represented by infantry in the game currently. But all that isn't to say that the footmen would be a damage dealer. In fact, they'd have pretty low damage, otherwise they'd just be like a Teutonic Knight. Slow, tough, and kills everything in three hits. The reason for this, besides balance, is that in real life, infantry on infantry battles were slow and attrition oriented. You'd have two front lines crunching against each other for sometimes upwards of an hour before one turned tail and fled. It was very rare that they would fight to the last man, and to represent this, the footman would have a relatively low damage output, and rely instead on its staying power, attack bonuses, and massive resistance to things like enemy arrow fire. This leads perfectly into the other main use for the footmen. I find that infantry are too easily countered by both cavalry and archers in the current game. But Robbie, you say, the spear line counters cavalry. Well. Kind of. You see, spears only counter cavalry if the enemy rushes their cavalry into those spears. Now, spears are pretty fast and can chase, but they're also unbelievably weak to enemy arrow fire. And to this end, a decent enemy army comp, you know, paladins and skirms, for example, is going to completely invalidate any infantry strategy with two units. And I don't really think that's fun. There's, there's a lot of cavalry and archer units that can be massed and invalidate enemy strategies single-handedly, like knights, or more specifically, like the archer line. And to that end, I think the infantry need a little bit of love as well. So for the footmen, they have shields, they're great versus arrows. They'd have very high pierce armor. It was always weird to me how no Imperial Age infantry in Age of Empires actually uses a shield. Like, they're pretty useful, guys. And don't get me wrong, I understand that the Imperial Age and Age of Empires largely represents kind of gunpowder-era Renaissance battlefields that didn't have a lot of shields, 
But remember, you can tech up to the Imperial Age in historical scenarios depicting the fall of Rome. Imperial Age is not strictly a reflection of technological levels. It's more like your civilization's arc through the ages, with the Imperial Age being like the apex of their given dominance within a particular time period. And there's a lot of civilizations that were very dominant when shields were also very dominant. So moving on, rant aside. Now, they also obviously have spears. And as we all know, spears are good versus horses. In history, again, cavalry almost never charged infantry lines directly. And though the footmen would counter cavalry far less than something like a pike or a halberdier would, they would still have enough of a defensive bonus to make cavalry think twice before charging them. What I'm trying to get at with the footmen is to encapsulate what I think infantry combat would have looked like on a medieval battlefield in a way that translates better to Age of Empires. Defensive and slow, trying to halt an enemy advance and push them back using a combination of these powerful backbone troops and some of your higher damage infantry units like champions and halberdiers. With that, we come to the end of the history section. If you're just here for the history, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to leave a like before you go, a comment if you have one, and give me a little subscription. But for all those of you who love Age of Empires, let's move on to the game mechanics. What would footmen look like actually in the context of the game? So at a glance, the footmen would be unlockable in the Feudal Age and have two upgrades through later ages. They would be, of course, available at the Barracks. And in Castle Age, they would upgrade to the Retainer. The Retainer would have a fairly pricey upgrade cost for Castle, a little bit above a pikeman in total resources with a much greater emphasis on gold. In Imperial Age, they would also upgrade to the Honor Guard. This would follow a similar trend. It would be just a bit more expensive than a halberdier with even greater emphasis on gold. So, as you can see, you're already investing a substantial amount of gold to unlock these units in the first place. Uh, what is the age of baby now? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> a big smile for your beautiful daddy. Uh. Oh, big fuss for your awful mummy who's making you eat. <laughs> okay. Now, moving on. Stats. Having summarized the upgrade track, what does a footman's stat profile look like? Well, first of all, they would have a three resource cost, that being 40 food, 25 wood, 25 gold. This will force a mixed economy if you want to mass them, but it means that they're not going to burden you too much on any given resource. They would also have fantastic HP and armor for an infantry unit. That being said, they would be slow, slower than the swordsman line, and their damage output wouldn't be fantastic. Like, any given strike they do would do an okay amount of damage, but they would strike at a slower rate than would an equivalent swordsman. Additionally, while they would have bonus damage, their bonus damage would be something of a hybrid between that of a spearman and a swordsman. Like a swordsman, they'd have a little bonus versus buildings and eagle warriors, and like a spearman, they'd have bonus versus cavalry, camels, elephants, etc. But on both sides of this equation, the bonus damage would be substantially lower than their equivalents. Like, they'd have less than half of a spear's anti-cavalry bonus damage, maybe even a third of what a halberdier can do in Imperial Age. So you wouldn't be able to rely on them nearly as much as a hard counter to cavalry, instead serving more as a deterrent. Once again, if you want more details on the stats, including more specific numbers, check out the unit doc in the description. In addition to all this, the unit would have two specific technologies that would benefit it only. The first of these would be Shield Wall, which could be researched in the Castle Age for 300 wood, 450 gold. Now, Shield Wall would give them a colossal Pierce Armor bonus while they are not moving. We're talking somewhere in the range of like plus five or six Pierce Armor, mostly invalidating the vast majority of projectile weapons in the game. And moreover, if they were standing still and attacking, the bonus would still apply. It would only not benefit them when they were walking, meaning that you're very much incentivized to sit and absorb arrow fire rather than charging after the archer shooting at you. Shield Wall would also give them a very small speed bonus, enough to bring them to the level of their counterparts, the swordsmen. Once you hit Imperial Age, you'd be able to research Oaths of Loyalty for a massive 1250 food, but a pretty small 250 gold. Oaths would reduce the unit's gold cost, making them take even less gold than a swordsman, and make them train substantially faster. 
they would also be able to regenerate HP, slower than a Berserk, but since you're massing them in great numbers, even a small trickle of HP will benefit them over time. And it should allow them to outheal the DPS of most ranged units if you're sitting still in a shield wall. Now that you've seen an overview of what the unit is like on paper, what are its intended strengths? Well, obviously, the first thing the footman is going to be best at doing is holding the line. They'll be able to fend off most incoming attacks, especially projectiles allowing them exceptional staying power versus all but the highest damage enemy units. They also have very few hard counters, so it's harder for an enemy to cost efficiently trade against them. They can also, even better, make it so that an enemy is held up. They get gummed up fighting the footmen and have trouble moving on to fight your more important targets, so they make for a great front line or for a deterrent force when you're on the defense. This also means that they're great for controlling choke points. The other thing that the footman is very good at is slow pushing, a creeping advance towards enemy lines in the face of overwhelming arrow fire. They do have that nice anti-building bonus damage, and on top of that, their high pierce armor will allow them to weather even the most devastating of castle and tower fire. If you have shield wall, all the better. A bunch of footmen attacking a castle in base contact will take very little damage, probably lasting even longer than Huskarls would while doing almost as much damage. This tactic is best used when you have shield wall, of course. Not only do you get that extra bit of speed, but the amount of armor you get will allow you to kind of stutter step towards an enemy fortification. The castle fires, you hit stop, your units take the arrow fire, and then keep walking. In this manner, you might actually be able to cheekily bring down an enemy castle with as few as 20 or 30 30 footmen. Also, archers are great on defense. They're great on offense too. They're great on everything and they're honestly overpowered, but the footmen are very good against archers, and in a slow push, enemies will often create archers to try to deter you. More importantly, while you are sieging an enemy base, enemy cavalry are less likely to be able to go in and pick off your trebuchets, rams, or mangonels if you have a bunch of footmen surrounding those vulnerable units. But that's not all the footmen will be able to do well. As you might expect, they'd also be a very effective counter unit. They have that nice attack bonus versus mounted units, though it is, of course, a lot worse than the spear line. And they are excellent against trash units. Moreover, if you're in Feudal Age and your enemy is trying to launch a scout rush or an archer rush, the footman has you covered. With no upgrades whatsoever, you'll be able to respond to enemy pressure by creating a couple of these guys. Archers will do almost no damage to them even before you get armor upgrades, and the scout anti-damage bonus will kind of help deter them from picking off your vills. Though, in honesty, spearmen are still going to be largely better against scouts because of their ability to chase. The footman, however, fills a niche of being good against both types of rush. Lastly, if you have a sieve with a couple of infantry bonuses and a good footman tech tree, they can very easily be the backbone of your army. Once you have oaths of loyalty, they are super duper spammable. Low gold cost, reduced training time, HP regeneration, all of these things make for a very, very sticky unit that is really hard to deal with before the next wave comes in. This will make the footman a very threatening unit in a death ball. Pretty much the only unit you can really use to respond to them at that point are going to be something extremely high damage like Siege Onagers or Hand Cannoneers, and we'll get more into how to counter this unit a little bit later on. Right now, most infantry civilizations just have the champion as a haymaker unit, something they can close out a game with. And the footman gives them another option, especially once the enemy starts making units like crossbows that often hard counter the sword line. But of course, the footman is not without its flaws. I've mentioned a few already, but we'll go over them quickly now. The big obvious one is that it is slow. And in Age of Empires, being slow is usually a death sentence for units. It's somewhere between the Swordsman and the Teutonic Knight in terms of its actual movement rate, which is very bad. Um, and while Shield Wall does help out, they are very susceptible to Siege. In fact, I'd say Siege is the single biggest threat to your footmen, especially once you hit Imperial Age and the enemy starts creating Siege Onagers and Heavy Scorpions, both of which I foresee being the best counters to the unit overall. The other problem is while they are good against both Cavalry and Archers, their slowness makes it very hard for them to catch them. This makes them less good on offense against those units and like chasing down enemy raiding parties, and much better if you can just park them in a choke point while ignoring the enemy units that cluster around them like flies. On top of that, while the footman is very devastating when massed, they take a long time to train. 
at about the same time as a knight would take. While on paper this is just kind of a matter of seconds, if you're trying to mass up 20 or 30 of them, that's going to mean an extra, what, 3-4 minutes before you have a full army? And that's a lot of time to be waiting around. Their other big downside is that they don't have fantastic damage. While, again, their attack is okay, their low rate of fire makes it a lot harder for them to sustain damage output in a long-term fight. This means that high DPS enemy units, swordsmen, knight, hand cannons, siege weapons, are usually going to win in a prolonged fight. In the case of siege and hand cannons, they might even be able to chew up your footmen before they even reach them, which would be, of course, pretty devastating. As such, you have to be smart when you're using your footmen. Since they're slow, you can't really escape things like overwhelming paladin numbers, and instead you have to position them in an area where they're less likely to be charged by something they have an unfavorable mashup against. Not to mention, just mix in a bunch of spears or other counter units will help them out a lot. The last flaw of the footmen is that they're expensive. While they take three different resources, the total number of resources you spend on a given unit isn't that bad, especially considering how much defensive power you're getting per each. The downside is that they have a lot of specific upgrades. In fact, they have over 3,000 resources worth of specific upgrades if you want to bring them to their ultimate potential. That's more than any other unit in the game. And it means that while you could have that dream Imperial Age army that is unkillable, cheap, and endless, it's going to take a lot of effort to get there. Meaning that that sort of massing is probably only going to be viable in team games. So which civilizations would have great footmen, have a very comprehensive tech tree, on top of, of course, ideally a couple of nice infantry bonuses? So a couple of the best ones out there would be the Burmese. I mentioned earlier they were one of my historical inspirations, and in-game they would have every footman upgrade available, not to mention a couple of nice infantry bonuses. The Incas would also have almost fully upgraded footmen. I could even see them having all of the upgrades, though if I had to skip out on one upgrade it would probably be Oaths of Loyalty. The Teutons would also have excellent footmen. They have great historical basis for it. The only thing they might miss out on would be shield wall. And while they do have, of course, historical precedent for having shield walls, they also, in Age of Empires, have kind of a, a traditional theme of being slow and lumbering. And shield wall does make you a little bit faster. I also think that a Teuton creeping advance with all of their other bonuses could be a little annoying to deal with. So maybe skip that one for them if you're worried about it. In terms of civs that have okay footmen, but maybe miss a couple of critical upgrades, I think the Britons could have some pretty decent ones. Like Retainer plus Shield Wall, that's a great combo in Castle Age, and even if they can't really follow through with great Honor Guard and Imperial Age, I think they could be viable if you had a Castle Age push or needed to mount a defense versus an enemy crossbow rush. The Saracens would also have pretty decent retainers. They'd get Oaths of Loyalty for sure, which would mean that late game, if you really wanted a cheaper infantry option that you could mass up and send forwards as a sticky backbone, they would have some potential there as well. There would be a lot of civs that would also have very weak footmen, however. The Chinese would have completely unupgraded footmen, making them only possibly viable as a response to enemy rushes. And the Portuguese would be in a similar boat. Neither of those two have a really strong precedent for this sort of unit historically, and there's got to be a couple losers among the roster. Most of all, the steppe civilizations wouldn't get footmen whatsoever. I think this is fitting considering their history as well as their niche as being cavalry oriented, so they'd miss out on the infantry powerhouse. But apart from these four, every single civ in the game would get at least the footman line, and a good number, probably well over half, would get retainer, with another maybe third or so getting all the way up to honor guard. Now, while I'm pretty happy with my build for the footman, there's definitely a couple of lingering questions in my mind. The main one being the overarching goal of the unit. I set out to design a unit that would allow infantry to be more viable and varied, something that would help shore up their massive weakness to archers specifically, but could still be okay against cavalry. Something tough that would give them more staying power instead of dying in droves like they normally do. Especially a unit that is best countered by other infantry, which the footmen somewhat is. The swordsman line is one of the best counters to them. I'm just not entirely sure that the unit I've designed here actually achieves those goals that I lined up. 
I did my best. I think it gets close to achieving those goals, but in practice, Age of Empires often works differently from how you think it will work in theory crafting. And as such, I just don't know how this would work unless it was actually implemented in a mod or something, which I have neither the time nor talent to create. Apart from that, there are a handful of potential concerns that come to my mind. It does take three different resources, which is breaking a major convention of the game, so if that annoyed too many people, I could really see changing the cost to be like 65 food, 25 gold, something nice and easy like that, though I personally like the three resource convention, and I wish the game would try it a little more often. There's also a good chance that the unit is just overall too slow and expensive. Those, those are two of its major downsides, and there's always a chance that those downsides are just too insurmountable for the unit to be viable, even if it has strengths and potential. Not to mention, it could also just be way too sticky. Like, I, I see this unit being a bit snowball-y. Once it gets going, it's very, very hard to counter. And so if it ended up somehow being too oppressive in practice, I could see maybe giving the Swordsman line an anti-footman bonus to make them a more obvious go-to counter, kind of like how they counter eagles currently. The other issue I see is that two unique techs is a lot. It's more than any other unit in the game. Two unique techs, especially ones that are so expensive, might be a little bit excessive, especially when you consider how much the total cost to upgrade the unit is. It's even more to go from footman to honor guard fully upgraded than it is to go from knight to paladin, and, and that's saying something. I think it's even more than to go from like cataphract to elite cataphract, including logistica. So, probably too expensive overall, I could see tuning that down a little bit to compensate. Additionally, I think that the text I designed might even just be too powerful. Like, Oaths of Loyalty does an awful lot, Shield Wall gives a massive change to how the game actually plays in terms of arrows doing absolutely nothing when you're standing still, so there's a chance they would have to be tuned down, but I think that it's more likely they are too weak due to how many resources they take to fully tech into. Overall, I could see maybe reducing the number of unique technologies to one. I do think one is important, but if I had to pick, I would probably keep Shield Wall. I think it's a lot cooler. And if I did, I might bundle some of Oaths of Loyalty's bonuses into the unit at baseline to make it a little bit stronger. And with that, we come to the end of our journey through the Footmen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch through. As we always do, I'd like to conclude with taking a spin of the old likelyometer. In my opinion, how likely is it that a unit like the Footmen could be implemented into Age of Empires? Drum roll, please. Four out of ten on the likelyometer. I think it is below average likelihood that the footmen could be implemented. It's kind of weird, it's kind of quirky, and the AoE team seems very reluctant to introduce new common units into the game outside of regional ones. But even so, I would love to see something like the footmen implemented. Something that makes infantry a little more exciting, a little more viable, a little more dynamic, and a little more well-rounded. So how do you like my design? What do you think? Do you think that infantry in Age of Empires needs to be shored up? Do you think that there is a historical hole that the footmen can fill to represent a few more units in the grand context of medieval warfare? And if you think that there's some room for this unit, but you don't really think that my design did it justice, what would you do differently? Lastly, as always, I'd love to hear what civilization or unit you guys would like me to tackle next. I always love reading your comments down below. You gave me so many good ideas, and I have a couple other cool projects coming up which are directly inspired by your input. So keep an eye out for that, especially now that we have the new setup going. More videos to come in the not-too-distant future. But until then, my name has been Robbie Howell, and ciao for now.